Next, we'll look at a special type of triangles or right angle triangles, which uh, are actually the favorite type of uh, GRE triangles. Uh, this should be L line B. So, this is the second part of our ninth lesson. Okay, so a right angle triangle is a triangle where one of the angles is 90 degrees, which is represented by this small square. Okay, so now there are the special types of right angle triangles. So, the first one is <coughs> Excuse me, we're going to look at it. It's a triangle where the other two angles are 45 degrees. So they're equal and they're 45 degrees. <clears throat> this type of triangle is known as an isosceles right triangle. No need to remember the name though. Okay, so your other two angles are equal to each other. Now, if you remember from triangle properties, if two angles are equal, then the sides opposite to these angles are also equal. All right. So side opposite to 45 here, this this leg of the triangle, let's say this is x, then this leg, which is opposite to the other 45, is also x. Okay. So you. <coughs> uh, so so this is known as a 45, 45, 90 triangle and your sides can be represented by x, x, and actually the third side, which is the longest side, also known as the hypotenuse, that's the side opposite to the 90 degree. So 90 degree is the longest angle in a right triangle. So the side opposite to it, which is known as the hypotenuse, hypotenuse is always the longest side. So in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, the hypotenuse is always equal to x root 2. So x is the of uh, any of the other sides which are equal. And you times it by root 2, you get the hypotenuse. Okay, so this memorizes, you know, if you have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, then the sides are always x, x, x root 2. And they go in multiples of this. So, so let's say the sides are um, 2, 2, and 2. Okay, the third the side and the hypotenuse would be 2 root 2. Let's say the sides are the, the, the two equal sides are 5, 5, 5. Mm -hmm. Then the hypotenuse could be 5 root 2. Okay. So so very important property that we need to know for sure. Right, the other type of the triangle is where one of the angles is 30 and the other angle comes out to be 60. Okay. <coughs> and and this can go in either direction. So the other angle can be 30, and this angle could be 60. Okay, so in this angle, in this triangle, the side opposite to 30, you can say that's an x. Okay, so the side opposite to 30, let's say that's an x. So, so first of all, this triangle is known as a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Both, both of these are the same thing, it's just the position of the angles are different. So these two triangles are known as 30, 60, 90 triangles. So the side opposite to 30, let's say that's x. Then the side opposite to 60 would be x root 3. Okay, again, something that you need to memorize. Okay, so the side opposite to 60 would be x root 3. And the side opposite to the 90 degree, the hypotenuse, would be 2x. Simple. So everything goes by x, okay? So make one side x, that, which is the side opposite to 30, then 60 side would be x root 3, the side opposite to 90, the hypotenuse would be 2x, okay? And again, all these go in ratio. So let's say x, the side opposite to 30, uh, the x is 10. Then the side opposite to 60 would be 10 root 3. And the side opposite to 90 would be 20, okay? So, so very important to memorize this, okay? <clears throat> and the other thing you should memorize is that um, root 2 is equal to 1.4 something, but 1.4 is good enough, and root 3 is equal to 1.7. So this would save you precious time, so you don't have to punch these things in the calculator uh, to find the values. You can directly take these values and do simple math right, right off the bat. Okay. Uh, okay. The isosceles right triangle. I want to talk a bit more about that. So, so let's say you have a square. I have a square. The square. 
So square all the sides are equal. So let's say all of the sides are x, x, and x. I'm going to draw the diagonal in the square. So diagonal goes from one vertex to the opposite vertex. So this is your diagonal. Now it's a square, so so angles, these angles are 90 degrees, right? So so and what happens is that since these two sides are equal, this triangle, this right triangle that you have formed. Okay. will have the two angles being 45 and 45, right? Because the two sides are equal. <clears throat> which means the diagonal, which is the hypotenuse of either of the triangles, is just equal to x root 2, okay? So if you have a square and you know its length, the side length is x, then the diagonal is always equal to x root 2. This again an important fact to remember, okay? Now, uh, a square, when you draw a diagonal, it splits into two 45, 45, 90 diagonals, okay? And the hypotenuse, which is the tri, which is the diagonal, is equal to x root 2. Okay. <coughs> Next, we'll look at the Pythagoras theorem. All right, so we know we have a right triangle, we have sides A, B, C. We know C is the longest side, right? C, the hypotenuse, this is a shorter phi part with h phi p. We know that's the longest side. So Pythagoras theorem says that the hypotenuse, if we square that, is equal to the sum of the square of the other two, other two sides. Okay. So again, something to memorize. This is very important. Comes in handy many times. Okay. Um, all right. Next, there's some common lengths of right triangles that you need to remember. So one very common one is three, four, five. Okay, so so three, four would be the, the two shorter lengths, so A and B, let's say, and five would be your hypotenuse C. Okay, and any ratio, any any ratio of these three would work. So let's say if I multiply everything by two, so I'll have three times two six, four times two eight, five times two ten. This would also work. Uh, Let's say I multiply this by 10, uh, then I'll get 10 times 3, 30, 10 times 4, 40, 10 times 5, 50. This would also be a right triangle. Okay, so any multiple of 3, 4, 5 would give you a right triangle. And the common length uh, to remember is, let me prepare the color, 5, 12, 13. And similarly, all the ratios of these would also give us right triangles. So 10, 24, 26. Let's multiply this by 5. So 25, 5 times 12 is 60. And I think 5 times 13 would be 65. Okay. So so very important to remember these these two, 3, 4, 5, and 5, 12, 30. These are two very common right angle triangles. <coughs> Okay, let's do some problems. Alright, so here's the first one. Actually, this uses a slightly different concept, which I'll introduce as we do the problem. So we have these triangles in there. It says BC is 3, CD is 5, AE is 8. A is 8. What is DE? DE. You want to find this one. <coughs> what is DE? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. First thing, right off the bat, you know CBD is a right triangle. I have 3, 5. 3 and 5. This means the third side has to be 4. Okay. Right off the bat, I know this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. It's a right triangle. Two sides are 3 and 5. The other side has to be 4. Okay, you can use the Pythagoras theorem, which says c squared equals a squared plus b squared to find it, but don't waste your time. Just remember it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So bd is 4. Okay, the other important thing to realize here is that uh, angle c is common to triangle cbd. So this is a triangle sign. And when I write it this way, it means I'm referring to the three vertices of the triangle C, B, D, and the triangle 
I'll write it this way A C E. Okay, so uh, angle C is same in these two triangles, right? Angle C is same. Now that tells me actually this angle and this angle. So angle D and angle E have to be equal to. Why is that? Because well, all the angles have to sum up to 180. So if two angles are equal, the third angle has to be equal to. If two angles of a triangle, of two triangles are equal, then the third angle in each of those triangles has to be equal to. <coughs> Alright, so and now I know all the three angles are equal. So what happens is that when you have all angles equal in a triangle, so what I, we can see, say is that triangle CBD and triangle ACE, ACE are similar triangles, are similar triangles. So similar means they are kind of the same in the shape. And what the consequence of the similarity is that the ratio of sides is equal. So let's say I take side um, BD and which is the base of triangle CBD and I take the side AE which is the base of triangle CAE okay and I know BD is 4 and I know AE is 8 so it's like the ratio is 1 to 2 right now all sides basically all the ratios would be same because the triangles are similar. So if I take the ratio of let's say CD, which is the hypotenuse of CBD, and the hypotenuse of the ACE triangle, which would be CE. So this ratio would also be one half. Okay, because the triangles are similar. So I know CD is five. So CD is five, and now I can solve for CE. CE would come out to be 10. Okay, so if CE is 10, then DE has to be 5 also, right? Which is C. Uh, again, CE, C to E was 10, and I know CD is 5, so DE has to be 5 too. Okay, so this is one of the hard questions. Similar triangles don't occur that often on the GRE, but it's good to know. So when all the angles of a triangle of two triangles are equal, all the three angles are equal, then you can say the triangles are similar, which says that the ratio of the sides of these two triangles has to be equal of any sides. Okay, so I'll make another video on this on similar triangles to clarify this further. Uh, but for I hope, but I hope for the time this this clarifies what similar triangles are. Okay, the next question. Let me reduce the size here. Okay, so it's the quadratic comparison questions. You have two questions. You have a single diagram, a circle with a triangle in the circle. Quantity A says the length of AB, the length of AB, and quantity B is 7. And the angle X is greater than 90. Okay, one thing to realize here is that uh, OB is a radius of the circle and it's 5 and OA is also a radius, so radius of the circle are equal, so OA has to be 5 too. Um, now let's think about a scenario where, let's say X is 90, okay, so you'll get a right triangle with two sides equal, 5, 5, which means that two angles here, they would be equal and they would be 45. So this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, 45, 45, 90 triangle with sides 5. So the, the side opposite to 90 would be 5 root 2. <clears throat> and 5 root 2 is equal to 5 times 1.4, which is 7 point something. So you can quickly do this on the calculator, that 5 times 1.4. Is 7 uh, but since 2 root is greater than 1.4 so this would come out to be 7.07 .07. but yeah, something 7 or slightly greater than 7 okay but the question the, the, the thing to realize is that if the angle was 90 then AB would have been 7 or greater slightly greater than 7 but the angle is greater than 90, so AB has to be greater than 7. So the right answer here is that AB is the bigger 
is bigger than 7, so A is the right answer. <coughs> okay, so see how we, we, okay, so X was not 90, it's greater than 90, but since we can do a lot with 90, we took it to be 90, and we saw that the side has to be greater than 7, okay? So this is one of the tricks that you can do uh, to make your life easier. All right, uh, so the next question is a continuation. The perimeter of triangle AOB and the quantity B is 20. So, so you have your triangle AOB. Perimeter means the sum of all the sides. So I have the two sides are 5 and 5. The third side, X, I don't know. Perimeter means 5 plus 5 plus X. That's the perimeter. Uh, of a triangle, so you sum up all the sides. So, so what can be x b? So I know from triangle equality that the sum of two sides, so five and five is ten, has to be greater than the third side. So <clears throat> x has to be less than ten. Well, if x has to be less than ten, let's say it's ten, then the perimeter would be five, five, and ten, twenty. So, so it can't even be that. Okay. So what I'm saying is that. Let's say the third side is 10, which it cannot be. It has to be less than 10. But even if it's 10, then the perimeter would be 20, and that's not a possible value. The perimeter has to be less than 20, which means the correct answer in this case is B. Okay. Again, these are kind of a hard questions on GRE. Here, you don't know the exact information, but still, you can make some assumptions, some intelligent assumptions to get the answer. Okay.